I think, making the decision to say, from this day forward, I am a brave woman. Mm. I'm, just, I'm a brave woman. That's who I am. It's not what I do, but it's who I am. Just start saying yes to hard things. Yes. Step out and be brave. And one day you're going to open your eyes and you're going to look like, wait a minute, I really am a brave girl. Without Fear of Her Future podcast is for women who are passionately pursuing financial freedom using multiple streams of income and real estate to accomplish their goals. We are here to empower you to be brave, dream big, and design a life that you love that inspires others to do the same. I'm your co-host, Andrea Ingstrom, a real estate investor and business coach and co-founder of The Partnership for Realtors. And I'm here with my co-host, Teresa Todd, founder of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and author of the best-selling book, Without Fear of Her Future. Over the past two years, Teresa has had nearly 200,000 join her masterclass where she teaches women how to become successful real estate investors. So today, we're going to be talking about what holds us back from moving forward confidently as a real estate investor. Because, you know, most women we meet who are trying to decide if they should take the leap of faith to become an investor will say that it is fear that holds them back. Yes. So on today's episode, we're going to discuss how to get started on your journey toward becoming a woman who is truly without fear of her future. Hi, Teresa. Hey, Andrea. Hey. This is probably going to be my very best, my very favorite topic ever. Um, as you know, be brave, dream big is, is my slogan. And um, a scripture that God gave me several years ago literally transformed my life. And so I love to not only teach women real estate investing, the how-tos and all the strategies, but to help them overcome the fear that would hold them back. So super awesome. excited about today. I'm excited to dig into this topic with you because you are literally the author of Without Fear of Her Future, and you teach a masterclass on this. So Teresa, why do you think so many of us struggle with fear when it comes to real estate investing or starting a new business or, or stepping out in faith? I think there's a lot of things that we fear. And if we just talk about real estate investing in general, um, I believe I can speak for myself. Mm -hmm. When my sons were trying to talk me into becoming a real estate investor, first of all, I was 50 years old. And I was like, I am too old to learn a whole new career and industry. And I was just intimidated by the entire thing. Yeah. As well as I had this false belief that you had to have a lot of money mm. to get a, get started. And even though I knew that my sons had 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 done this and had become extremely successful and they had started it without money, I still couldn't see myself mm -hmm. being able to do that. And so those were the two biggest things that held me back. That totally, that totally resonates. And it's so interesting because you, you mentioned you had even seen someone else do it yeah. and you were still feeling, <laughs> feeling stuck. So what, what do you believe that, that for you, what were you really afraid of? Ooh, I was, um, I was afraid of failure for sure, especially mm -hmm. because it was my sons that were trying to talk me into it and they were so successful. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh my gosh, what if I can't live up? to their expectations. Ugh. What if I, you know, what if I jump into this and yes. I can't do it? And I am very, um, like I'm a planner and I yeah. need to know my finances. And I at least knew that I had some income coming in every two weeks. I was yeah. very used to that. And I had lived on a budget and to walk away from something that I knew was solid yep. to jump into something that I knew it it, it was I going to be able to do it? Was I going to be able to collect a paycheck? Was I going to be able to make a profit? Was just so scary for me. Yeah, you know, and it's so interesting because that was a few years back for you. But you know, I think so many of us coming through the pandemic, all the things that we thought were secure yes. are no longer as secure, and so some of that, some of that fear has shifted to like yeah. trying to grab. I mean, we're grasping for security yeah. right now, but I think we've also had this this time in our lives while we where we've realized the things that we thought were a sure bet 
are, are not a given anymore. Yes. And so having having faith or learning to overcome fear, some of us were have been pushed into it, <laughs> forced upon us. Yeah. Um, but Teresa, you have created a huge network. You've published a book and you're speaking all over the country now. So were you you were you always that con- was there that confident woman um, in the background somewhere? Uh, I want to hear tell us a little bit about your story of, about your relationship with fear in your life. Oh, Andrea, I was born into a family of fear. Mm. And I mean, crazy kind of fear. My Everybody except for my mother. I'm going to leave her out of it because she was extraordinarily different and full of faith and full of, I mean, she wasn't afraid of anything. But everyone else, my dad, my grandparents, my cousins, um, we had a, we came from a family of alcohol and drugs, and they were just afraid of everything. And I'm talking about if they had a headache, they thought they had brain cancer. Wow. If they, I mean, it was just everything was scary. And so yeah. I grew up in that. And I can remember being a little girl and being so afraid of everything that I would literally get um, sick at my stomach. If any, and there was a lot of fighting and a lot of yelling and a lot of that kind of stuff in my family. Yeah. And those kinds of things would make me really tense and filled with anxiety and fear. And I was so shy that I stood behind my mother's back. And um, so, I mean, I know fear very, very, very well. And yeah. I was in my 20s. It's a crazy story. I read a book and um, I saw myself in the book. And I realized that I was filled with fear and insecurity and I had a lot of issues, Andrea. I was a hot mess because of the way that I had been raised, even though my mother had raised me in church and I loved God and I was, I always wanted to serve him. It was just like this mix of two people. And so that book literally made me self-aware. And so I think Mm. for anybody listening today, the very first thing that we have to do is realize Are you a fearful woman? All of us have a level of fear, but some of us are like, I mean, it is like a spirit of fear has taken you over. And that's where I was. And I was determined to be free. Mm. And I think that was the very first step is I began to decide to be a brave woman. And so walked myself out of it. A lot of prayer, a lot of crying out to God to help me to overcome it, but also taking steps. Okay. And um, so I think one of the things to, even if, you, even if you're not like me and you don't have fear about everything, maybe it's just fear about starting a business or starting as a real estate investor. I think one thing we have to do is recognize, kind of sit with that fear a little bit and say, okay, what is the common sense? Because mm. fear... Well, we will lose all common sense when yeah. fear. I, I know a, a friend of mine <laughs> that literally has never been to the dentist since she was like 10 years old because she had a bad experience. She's yeah. got fear about a dentist. And I'm like, so we were talking the other day. I'm like, so fear has completely talked you out of common sense because common yeah. sense says, go take care of your freaking teeth. Go, right. you know, but fear. And so I, she made the appointment, you know, so just if we sit with it and think about common sense, yeah. something that I love to do is I, I try to think when I'm afraid of something, who else has already done this? Who yeah. else? Is there, if they can do it, why can't I? Did they die? That is a question <laughs> that I ask myself. Did they die? Um, yeah. I remember having my sons. I was really young and I had all of them natural. And, you know, you're scared of having a baby. And literally one of the things that got me through it was thinking, millions of women have been having babies for years and years and years and they don't die. I mean, yes, a few do, but they don't die. They have pain. They live through it. And that's what got me through it. And I was able to have all three of my kids naturally. I never screamed. I never, I just like, okay, so we can get through anything that we have to when Mm -hmm. we predetermine. And that's what I have to do, whether I'm getting on a stage, whether whatever I'm doing, I like have to sit with it think about common sense, think about all the people that have done this before me. And if they can do it, why can't I do it? Yes. You know, I've, I've heard a, an acronym for fear and I know there's a lot of them running around, but the one that I really latch on to is that fear is false 
expectations appearing real. Yes. And it's that, and, and you, just like you said, it's that common sense. And, and, um, I, uh, in the Marie Forleo has a great book called everything is figure outable. I'm a big fan. Yes. And, um, and she talks about playing it out. Just say like, okay, and if this happened, then what would I do? Mm -hmm. And if that happened, then what would I do? And and it's that logical chain of events yes. where if you can actually think through it logically, you go, oh, and no one will die. And, exactly. and it, will be, it will be okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And we can, we can figure it out. Um, but tell me, who has been instrumental in your life in helping you to move past fear and towards bigger goals? Um, so... First off, I, I would always have to say my mother because my mother was an extraordinarily courageous woman that had overcame so many things in her life, yeah. was filled with confidence. And so she sewed that into me. Um, and then, believe it or not, it's my sons. I don't know how they came out of the womb, Andrea, like <laughs> ready to take over the world. <laughs> and, um, and they've never been afraid of anything. And so they are, they have, They've just done every kind of crazy thing, like jumping off of, you know, bungee jumping and, uh -huh. and, and going high and going far. And, and I wanted to be close to my kids. So I started doing those things with them, scared to death, acting like I wasn't scared. Nobody, and nobody having a clue that my heart was beating out of my chest. I was just trying to be cool. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that was I'm so thankful for that experience because um, I do believe that it has helped make me who I am today. Oh, I love, I love that you just said that you were doing it afraid yes. and you would just do it anyway. Yes. Uh, Cause I, I think, I think that's, that's the thing that I think some people can find really hard is, is if I could, if I can just move myself to, to take that action. Um, so tell us what are some of the, what are some of the principles or like, key ideas that you've learned that ha that help women overcome fear? Okay. So if one we just talked about it is recognizing it and then sitting down and thinking, how logical is this fear? Mm -hmm. Is it a true fear or is it just some kind of made up thing? Like you said, it's false evidence appearing real. real. And then being determined that you're not going to be a girl who lets fear rule her. I think that you, there's, and that's easy. Somebody listening to this today can literally say to themselves on today, July, whenever this is going to play yeah. uh, out, um, I am not going to be a woman of fear. I'm going to be a brave woman who does mm -hmm. hard things. And then saying that and believing that and then taking the steps. When someone gives you an opportunity to do something that's hard, instead of being freaked out about it, you're, it's okay to even be freaked out about it, but you just say, wait a minute, I'm a brave girl. I'm not going to say no to this. I'm not going to hesitate. Yeah. And so I will, I, all the time I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll figure <laughs> that out. And on the inside, I'm like, oh my God. And then, yeah. But you just do it. And so I think being determined and, um, and then can I just throw this out there, Andrea, I don't feel yeah. like I could have this conversation without, sharing Joshua 1 9. Yes. Because so I had already believed that I was pretty brave prior to January of 2017. I jumped out of the airplanes and I had done all the a lot of brave things. But it that was when my sons were trying to talk me into becoming a real estate investor. And I was teaching a Bible study out of the book of Joshua. And it was 12 weeks long. And as I dove into that the, it came alive to me that Joshua was taking the children of in the wilderness into the promised land. And God said to him, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I'm telling you, it just began to come alive in me. And I believed that God was saying to me, Teresa, have I not commanded you to be strong, to be courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For I will be with you wherever you go. And Andrea, I made a decision that for the rest of my life, I was going to do the bravest thing possible in every situation. Ooh, that gave me goosebumps. 
Yes. And, and I just started doing the little things that I needed to do. And then that night when I got that phone call from my son, it was probably the 10th phone call. <laughs> but that night it was different because I had made this promise. Yeah. So when he said, Mom, I really want you to, he didn't just ask me to learn real estate. He like said, Mom, I want you to move here. So wow. I had to leave my house that I had just built. I loved that house. I left my city, my friends, my church everything behind to move to Dallas, Texas and be brave. <laughs> and uh, oh my gosh, as you know, it was a decision yeah. that absolutely changed my life and the lives of so many others. And yeah. that's really what I want our listeners to hear is when you choose to do something brave, it's not just about you. We have no idea how our brave decisions are going to affect our children, our families, our community, and whoever else that God is going to use us to impact. Oh, that was great. I love you. So you said the the piece of it that was identity. You said, I am brave. I'm I'm choosing to be brave. Yes. Um, even though you don't always feel like it, you're choosing it. And you said, I, I am brave. I'm not just going to pretend to be brave. I am brave. You were yes. taking on that identity. Yes. And you, and then and then you heard something that created a shift in you. And you said you made a decision. And I love the idea of making a decision to do the bravest thing. Yes. And that that becomes your gauge for decision making. Yes. It should, it's not, should I do this or should I not do it? It's like, no, what would be the bravest thing? Exactly. That and I, I could go do. back to it and, and I blame God. I'm like, okay, like, you know, <laughs> I'm like, hey, you said for me to be brave and this is the bravest thing. So I'm going to expect you to be with me. I'm expecting for you to make it successful. I'm, ex I'm just going to go do it. And man, he's never let me down. He has uh. never let me down. Absolutely. Now, um, so fear does not just happen before we start something. It can creep up at every step along the way. It's not like we just decide to be brave and then all fear leaves us, right? right? We can be brave enough to take a first step, but then sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of a situation. And I, I get this on coaching calls all the time where someone said, okay, I did the thing. And now they're panicking because... <laughs> They're in the middle of it, and they're st they're still struggling with that fear. So, what are some practical ways that we can keep fear at bay, even when hard things are going on? Well, there's a couple of things. Is is just to expect expect hard things and expect yeah. trouble. Just because we decide to do something brave, it doesn't mean that it's all going to be easy. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact. You, Andrea, you know that so many times it's just you're still up against one battle after another. Yeah. And I kind of thought whenever I got into this that it was just going to, once I knew I made that decision to be brave and I quit the job, yeah. well, then I just thought God was going to make it all gravy. And it <laughs> was not gravy. It was literally one thing after another. And it's keeping going. And again, I have to go back to a lot of common sense. Mm. Once we have made one brave step, well, now you've got to take the next one and you've got mm -hmm. to take, you can't just stop in the middle. And so seek out the next answer. Seek out, figure it out. Everything is figure outable. Google it, get a coach, get a mentor, ask the next question, and then just keep going. And, and, and you just take the next step and the next step and the next yes. step. And finally, you'll look back and you're like, I did it. Absolutely. You know, something else I think that is really helpful in in those moments of fear when we're questioning everything, um, to be able to point back to what we know is true and to the clarity that that we had when we started, to be able to point that back to what are, okay, so what are my goals? Why did I start this in the first yes. place? And and to find find some inner strength by remembering why are we doing this thing? And and you you said it earlier. It, it, it's not just about you overcoming fear and being brave. It's about how it changes your life, your family's life, the the community around you, um, and to draw strength from from that purpose that's behind what you're doing, and to have that faith that if that if that is my purpose, if if that is you know the desire that God's placed in my heart then will he not see me through? Yes. You know? Yes. Well, you know, the other part of that scripture is do not be discouraged. Oh. And that, that 
you know, that didn't mean the most to me when I jumped out. But later that came alive to me because how many times I have been discouraged. And when you're discouraged because it's hard or it's not coming easy, that's when you want to quit. And then I would have to remind myself, oh, wait a minute. He didn't just say to be strong and courageous, but he said, do not be discouraged. So we have to recognize that we're discouraged and go, wait a minute. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm not going to let what she said discourage me. I'm not going to let this trouble, this problem discourage me. I'm yes. going to figure it out. I'm yes. going to move forward. Yes. You know, I think, I think sometimes, you know, we can be afraid of failure, but there's also, I think in some of us, there's a fear of success, right? There's a fear of, okay, if I make an offer on a big deal, what if they say yes? <laughs> then what? Then what? Then what? And then uh-huh. I got to know. And then I got to know who I am. Yeah. I got to show up and be her. I got to step into that new level of responsibility. And of course, the the fear of like, what if I can't handle it? But yeah. you know, but it, it. Who am I? And so I think working on who we are is, I think, just as important as working on our business or on a deal is we got to stay in that mindset of, of saying, okay, you know, who, who do I need to show up as today to, to be able to do the hard things, yeah. to be able to, to work through these challenges, because challenges are going to come Absolutely. as we're doing it. You know, there's this quote that I just love, and I, I always share this um, with the, the new groups that I coach, but it's, it's from a book called A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. Uh-huh. And you've heard me share this before. Yes, I but, love it. Um, but she says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous. You know, you've described yourself early on as a child who would hide behind her mother's skirts. And I think we ask ourselves, well, who am I? Yes. Who am I to stand in front yes. of everyone and, you know, and step into that, that person. And she, she continues and says, actually, who are you not to be? Hmm. You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. Uh, We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. And it is not just in some of us. It is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And I, I just love that, that idea that, that we, are, we are in a position to not just overcome our own fear, but to inspire others yeah. yes. to step into that, that light, that, that greatness that God has planned for them. Um, and, and it's for everyone. It's not just for some of us who, yes. who uh, are called or ordained or something like that. Everyone has, everyone has a potential and a greatness inside them. Yes. You know, I've heard you quote that a couple of times, but it never really resonated with me like it just did this time. Um, Here's the deal. When we get a revelation that God wants to do something with our life, it changes everything. If we keep living with this, exactly what you said, who am I? Who am I? And I'm going to be honest with you, Andrea, I still ask myself some that sometimes, who am I that God has (laughs) done this? That doesn't even make sense. But at the same time, I have to, I have to accept that he did. And now I got to fulfill it. And I've got to, you know, and so every woman listening, I want you to hear, get a revelation that God has something amazing for you, powerful for you, um, way above anything that you ever thought or imagined, and then step into it. And you know, you don't just step in. I didn't step into this today. It took one step at a time. First of all, walking away, learning the strategies myself, getting some deals, losing some deals, uh, you know, failing. It started with my very first you know, event with women and then my second event and then going online and then all of the things. Um, it's just this constant battle and it's not overnight, but if you just keep showing up and you keep saying yes, and you keep doing the bravest thing, you just turn around and you look at your life one day and you're like, 
wow, what if I had never, Andrea, I think yeah. about that. What if I had not responded when Kelton called me that night and yeah. I just kept doing my job and, you know, I wouldn't even know. I would yeah. not have a clue what was possible. Yes. Yes. I, I've always had this fear and I remember even being very young and having a fear of more, be more afraid that I would regret something I didn't do or regret something I didn't try than being afraid of actually trying it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and for I think for me, that's, that's kind of like a, one of those foundational parts of who I am is like this fear of missing out. <laughs> I love that. And I definitely see you in that, Andrea. You are. I, I feel like you're a lot like me and that you just say yes and you're going to figure out the how <laughs> later. And there's something so powerful about that. And 99% of the time, we'll figure it out. You know yeah. what? Every once in a while, we don't. Every once in a yeah. while we fail and that's okay. That's just being yes. real. But 99% of the time we'll go ahead and figure that thing out. Yes. And I definitely see that in you. And I think that that is what separates um, those who accomplish and those who don't is the one who is, is going to step out there and say yes and push through versus the, the woman who chooses to let her fear just yeah. always keep her down and never, uh, just always letting those lies and those insecurities and maybe even have people, you know, I am very blessed in my life now to have people that believe in me and that are pushing me, but my heart goes out to those who don't, that yeah. have a spouse or have family that is telling them, who do you think you are? You mm -hmm. can't do this. And um, I hope that you will hear mine and Andrea's voices louder than their voices saying, mm -hmm. you can do this. There is nothing impossible if you just believe and if you will step out and you will know that God is with you, mm -hmm. then um, the sky is the limit for you. Absolutely. You know, and we kind of started out the conversation talking about the idea of a fear of failure. And, you know, I... I lead a mastermind group that I, I had them go through this exercise. And I said, I want you to write down all of the things in your life that have prepared you for your next chapter, your next level of success. Mm -hmm. And this was related to real estate investing specifically, but they all wrote, um, they all wrote down, you know, there was a few accomplishments in there, but when I asked them each to share one thing, every single one of them shared a hard thing. They yeah. shared a, they shared a failure that they learned from. They shared something really challenging that they had experienced a trauma a trauma as a as a child or you know something that really hard that they had been through. And I think w the thing that we're most afraid of sometimes is actually the thing that God will use to yes. prepare us for for our our greatness. Yeah, and that and you know and every every story that we read about great people. It is rarely someone who has a silver spoon and the sun has been shining on them their whole life. Yeah. And and in reality, nobody wants to hear that story because nobody, <laughs> nobody can relate to it. Yes. But to be someone that gets through hard things, mm -hmm. that falls on their face sometimes. Yep. And is the one who gets back up. Yes. That's that's really that's what real being brave is. It's not that we never fall down. It's not yep. that it's not that everything always works out great. It's that we are we are able to just get back and keep get back up and keep going. Mm -hmm. you know? And failure doesn't define us. No, I mean, I, you know, I fail every day. Yeah. And but I can't let that define me. I can't let that get me down. I just have to, first of all, just acknowledge it. Don't try to don't try to hide it. Don't try just go. Yeah, I really screwed that up. Or, <laughs> you know, that didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. Or, you know, I wish I hadn't said that. You know, that's the one thing, Andrea, when you talk yeah. a lot, whether it's on podcast <laughs> or in front of you eventually say things that you wish you hadn't said. And yeah. typically I'm saying them in front of a thousand people at a time. <laughs> um, and I could beat myself up about that. Yeah. And, but I just have to go, okay, don't ever say that again. So whatever it is, I think a lot of uh, people that are successful have to learn not to let our failures define us. Yeah. Um, we're not going to be perfect. We're going to, we're going to fall. We're going to fail. And that's okay. Don't be so afraid of failing that you don't try something. Yes. Yeah. And I think, you know, sometimes 
sometimes things don't work out the way that, that we hoped that they would, but the lessons that we learn from it allow the next thing to be even better yes. than it could have been if we never went through that. Yes. You know, I love the stories of entrepreneurs. You know, some people, mm -hmm. unlike me, were born. I feel like this was you. <laughs> you were born to be an entrepreneur. You had an entrepreneurial spirit, you know, like at, like my sons. At a very, you know, you were born to that. I think. You may tell me different. but um, And I was not that way. But I love people who are. Even, and so many of them have two or three failed businesses. You know, they've, they they tried this and it didn't work. And they tried this and it didn't work. But you know what? They hear about real estate investing and they're like ready to try it again. And I love that because they're not letting that fear, oh, I've already failed three times. Who, what makes me think I can do this? But they are like, nope, I, yeah, I learned lessons from that. I'm not going to do this the way I did that. But um, yeah, just keep getting back up. Yes. Well, you know, Teresa, we always like to, to have three key takeaways at the end of each podcast we do. So, um, so let's do this, you and I. Um, okay. So tell me, what are the three things that you would invite, advise an investor or entrepreneur who is looking to be brave and grow or is perhaps feeling stuck where they are in fear? Wow. Okay. Well, first of all, if you're doing already, you, you, you have to have the specialized knowledge you have to you, yeah. you, and you need a coaching and you need mentoring but maybe you're already doing that and you're still stuck on what the next thing is I think figuring out what the next step is mm. asking your coach asking your figuring out what the next step is and doing it with no excuses mm -hmm. stop thinking you know oh I'm just I can't do cold calling or I can't do this or I can't you just have to suck it up and say, I will do this. And you just keep doing it over and over and over. And then before you know it, cold calling is nothing. Yeah. I do not care if somebody tells me yes or no. I'm giving them an opportunity. They can take it or leave it. I'm going to hang up and I'm going to call the next person. When we stop making it about, oh, they hurt my feelings or they said no or they cussed me out or whatever they do. <laughs> um, so that would be the first thing is figure out what the next step is and then take it. Awesome. Well, let's let's come up with two more key takeaways. I'll okay. I'll go next on this one. Yeah. Um. I think an, another thing is to be really clear about why you're doing this in the mm -hmm. first place. Be driven by a really a really strong why, um, and whether that's your your family or something that you want to do to help your community, um, or it's something that you just need to do to secure your own future. Like be able to point back to that strong sense of purpose that, you know, that calling or that, that clarity that yes. you get in the quiet moments by yourself and you say, okay, what do I, what do I want? What do I need to have happen in my life? And then be able to point back to that as your, as your clarity um, helps you to, to be, take Absolutely. a brave action because you know why yep. you're doing it in the first yeah, place. That's exactly right. All right. Give us a third one, Teresa. Okay. I am going to say the third one. We already talked about it, but before talking about steps is I think making the decision to say from this day forward, I am a brave woman. Mm. I'm, just, I'm a brave woman. That's who I am. It's not what I do, but it's who I am. I would write it. I would put sticky notes. I would say it. I would sing, uh, you know, find yes. songs about it. And yes. I would just begin to declare that that's who you are. And then every single opportunity that you have to be brave. And I'm talking about maybe that means you, you have a hard conversation with your spouse, or yeah. that means that when they, you know, your church has been asking you to teach a class and you've been saying no, well say yes. Um, just start saying yes to hard things, yes. step out and be brave and, one day you're going to open your eyes and you're going to look like, wait a minute, I really am a brave girl. And it's yeah. a, an amazing feeling. Yeah. No, I love that. That identity piece is so critical. One of the first affirmation statements I wrote for myself as an investor, um, because I had this, you know, I had this head trash telling me that I'm a quitter. And, um, and so I wrote, I am tenacious. I can do hard things. 
Oh. I am tenacious. I can do hard things. And you it. say that to yourself instead of that I'm scared yes. and I'm a quitter and things don't work for me. And you just change what you're telling yourself yes. about yourself. And that that identity shift is so, so important. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Well, thank you to everyone for listening today. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. That means so much to us. Um, but on behalf of Teresa Todd and the Women's Real Estate Investors Network, this is Andrea Engstrom inviting you to be brave and dream big.